Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we will discuss net operating loss for short NOL. Specifically, we're going to be looking at net operating loss for corporation. A net operating loss or an NOL arises in a tax year in which the corporation has deduction greater than income. Simply put, you incurred a loss. Why? You have more deductions, more expenses than the income than the corporation generated. Well, that's fine. So what is what is the importance of that? Well, let's take a look at two companies and compare their tax liability if the NOL did not exist and see the unfairness when your business is cyclical versus stable. Let's look at two corporations. Adam and Avi's corporation started their business in year one, two different corporations. Over the first five years, Adam Corp reported the following income. 20,000, loss of 160, taxable income of 70 in year three, a loss of 120, a taxable income of 150. Avi's Corp, on the other hand, their, their, their income is stable and it was 12,000 for the five years, year one to year five. Now, if we take 12,000 multiplied by five over five years, Avi made 12,000 times five, $60,000. Also, if we net out Adams Corporation, 20 minus 160 plus 170 minus 120 plus 160 also would average the same amount over five years. Now let's take a look at their tax bill, assuming no NOL exists, no net operating loss. Then we'll explain exactly how to use the net operating loss. For year one, assuming a tax, corporate tax rate of 21%, Adam will pay $42,000 on the 20,000. Avi will pay 2,250 based on 12,000. Then year two, Adam did not make any profit, no net income, therefore there's no taxes. Avi would pay 2,250. Year three, Adam will pay 37,500 because the net income was 170, the taxable income for the corporation. Year four, no income. Year five, 31,500. Avi at the same time is paying 21% over the next, over the five-year period. If we add up all the tax bill that Avi's pay, it's 12,600. If we add up the tax bill, that Adams pay, Adam Corporation is 71,400. Although over four years, they both made $60,000, 60K. So the Congress said, look, a bus the business is a continuation. Simply put, your business might be cyclical. It could go up, it could go down. Your business is stable. Well, in some years, you might be making a lot of profit and others not because that's going to be years where you, you're going to make a lot of investments in advertising and R&D until you make more profit once you have a product. Well, you should not be penalized for this. Simply put, your losses in year two and your losses in year four, you should be able to deduct them in future years. So simply put, your business between year one and year five is continuous. It, you cannot separate it each year separately. We have to look at it as continuous. And as a result, certain expenses will be taken in future years. And to show you exactly where everything goes, if we look at the 1120, the corporate, and if we look at exactly line 21A, we see a line that says net operating loss deduction. Simply put, the deduction that you did not use in prior years, you would use in the years where you do have taxable income. Before we proceed any further, most likely you are a student or a CPA candidate and I would like to share with you an announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Following points must be giving a great attention when determining NOL for corporation. You have to be aware of those. One, an NOL carried forward from the previous tax year should not be deducted when computing the current NOL. Simply put, you cannot use NOL from year one to create an NOL in year two. 
basically you're double dipping. So that's not allowed. Two, the dividend received deduction limitation. Now, if you don't know what dividend received deduction, just simply put, it's simply a deduction. It has certain limitation. That applies when determining the corporate taxable income are disregarded when determining the NOL. If the deduction of the total DRD creates or increase the corporate NOL. Simply put, if the DRD create an NOL or increase the NOL, you will disregard the limitation where you're computing this deduction. Three, and we'll work an example illustrating this point. But if you don't know what a DRD is, it just simply put, it's a deduction and it has certain limitation. The computation of NOL should be made before any deduction for charitable contribution. So you determine your NOL before you determine before you take your charitable contribution deduction. Just simply put, you cannot take your charitable contribution to create an NOL for you. A capital loss carried over or carried forward from the previous year can be deducted, however, against capital gains of the current year when, det when determining current NOL. So you could use capital losses carried forward, but not NOL carried forward to offset capital gain in this year in order to determine NOL. So that is allowed. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to take a look at an actual example. Let's assume for the year for the current tax year, Mike reported gross income of 250, which included capital gain of 45,000. In addition, Mike received dividend income from XYZ Corporation, a 50% owned corporation of $60,000. This is going to create a dividend received deduction. It also had operating loss of 260. This is for operating the business. So we're going to determine Mike's NOL for the current year, given that it had a capital loss carried forward of 20,000. We're going to assume that we have a carried forward loss of 20,000. Well, in determining the current NOL, Mike may deduct the capital loss carried forward against the capital gain. Remember, we have 45,000 of gains, right? That's included in the income. And this loss can offset those gains. That's fine. We can do that. In addition, Mike owns 50% of XYZ Corporation. Therefore, a deduction, a dividend received deduction of 65% is allowed. It's the amount 60,000, which is the amount of the dividend times 65%, which is 39,000. The taxable income limitation does not apply as the corporation has a negative NOL after deducting the DRD. And you will see this when we, do, when we do the computation. Simply put, we're gonna look at gross income 250 minus the carry, carry loss, carry loss carried forward, the 20,000 minus the operating expenses plus the dividend received deduction plus the, sorry, plus the dividend income minus the dividend received deduction. And as a result, we're going to have an NOL of 17,000. So what happened is this, by using the DRD, we created an NOL. Simply put, let's take a look at it before we computed the DRD. So without the DRD, 270 minus 270 plus 250, that's going to give us from operation, that's going to be negative 20, negative 20, and negative 20 of capital loss, that's going to give us negative 40, plus the dividend received deduction of, plus the dividend income of 60, that's going to give us plus 20. Then we're going to bring the dividend received deduction of negative 37, and that's going to create an NOL of 17,000. Therefore, we will take the full 65% of the dividend received deduction because it created an NOL for us. NOL rules changed over the years, so we have to be aware of this, and those rules are the same as the individual NOL, but I cannot assume that you know them, therefore I have to go over these rules. NOL arising on or before December 31st, 2017. So simply put, we're going to say everything changes at the end of 2017. So let's see, or the beginning of 2018. So this is 2018 going forward. Anything that happened before 2018, you could carry it back. You could carry the, the NOL two years back and 20 years forward. Now, some of these rules still apply because if you have a loss that was generated in 2016 and you're using it now in 2024, well, guess what? That 2016 loss is being used now. So it can be carried forward. It's still, it's still, it, it still applies. Now, what you need to know about this loss from 2016 you can deduct it up to 100% of taxable income before NOL deduction. So you could use this loss 
against whatever taxable income you have. You don't have to reduce your taxable income because we're going to see shortly that the rules did change after 2020, okay? Regardless of the year to which they are carried forward. So any any NOL from prior, prior to 2018 can offset 100% of your taxable income. Now, NOL that arises after December 31st, 2017, which is starting in 2018, all the way to 2020, okay, can be carried back. Those NOL arose in this period. They can go back. You can carry them back five years and you can carry them forward forever. Bear in mind that NOL arising after 2018 that applies to 2018, 2019, and 2020 may be also deducted up to 100% against your taxable income. And this is all before you take the NOL deduction. Simply put, your NOL from 2018, 2019, 2020, they can offset 100% of your taxable income. NOL arising during this period, 2018, 2019, 2020, that's being used, that we still have, but now we're using after 2020, which is 2021, 2022 forward. If that's the case, now the NOL can offset only 80% of your taxable income, not 100%, 80%. The rule have changed. It may be deducted up to 80% going forward from 2021. Now, any NOL starting after 2020, which is 2020, 2021 and, and going forward, it cannot be carried back. So basically those are the new rules. The latest rules is any NOL created after 2020, which is 2021 and forward, it can only be carried forward and it offset only 80% of your taxable income. It, it cannot offset your total taxable income. Okay, and we would look at an example to illustrate what we mean by the 20%. Also, anytime the carry back option is available, which is in 20, uh, in 27, prior to 2018, 2018, 2019, and 2020, the taxpayer may elect to carry back the net operating loss or just carry it forward. They do have this option. If the loss is carried back, it should be carried back to the oldest year in the carry back period first. So you will start with the oldest period first going forward. The best way to illustrate this is to take a look at an example. And let's assume at the beginning of 2022, Adam Inc., a calendar year C corporation, ask, ask, you, ask your support in preparing its schedule for the NOL carry back and carry forward. The corporation started in 2016 and the results are as follow. In 2016, they had an income of 30,000. In 2017, they incurred a loss of 60,000. In 2018, they incurred a loss of 32,000. In 2019, they have an income of 42, 2020 income of 5,000, and 2021 an income of 10,000. Now we're gonna prepare the NOL schedule for Adam Company. Okay, let's look at the rules first. So the corporation reported NOL in the years 2017 and 2018. So notice here we have net operating loss of this much. Bear in mind that losses from 2017, so this loss here, we can go back two years and we can carry it for, tw for 20 years. Losses from 2018, which is the 32,000, it can be carried back five years and carried forward indefinitely. Adam may carry back, so here's what's gonna happen. Adam may carry back half, half of its 2017 NOL. So what, what Adam should do is the best, if, he, if you're their advisor, the best is to take this 60,000 because you can go back two years and offset the income. The other half is carried forward to 2019. Then you did not use it in 2018. It will be carried against 2019 income. On the other hand, the NOL loss of 2019 is carried forward to 2019, 2020, and 2021. Now bear in mind the deduction against the 2021 income because the 2021 now we're in the past 2020 is subject to an 80% limitation. Don't worry, we're going to look at a schedule explaining everything that I just said. Show you how we're going to find out how much NOL left. Okay, starting with 2016, we all see that 2016, we have an income of 30,000. In 2017, we have a loss of 60. What are we going to do with this loss? We're going to take this loss, file an amended return, and take back, the, eliminate this 30,000 of income and get a refund. We can do that, and we have 30,000 left for future NOL, remaining NOL from 2017. And for how long can we carry this NOL? For 20 years. 
In 2018, we incurred the loss of 32,000. Now we have two NOL. We have one from 2017 and we have one from 2018. The one from 2018, we could carry it back five years, but there's no need because we did not exist up until 2016. And we can carry it forward forever. And for 2019 and 2020, it can be used to offset 100% of taxable income. And after 2020, it can only offset 80% of taxable income. In 2019, it was a good year. We had an income of 42,000. That's that, that's good, but we don't have to pay any taxes. Why? Because we have already, we are carrying, if you notice here, we are carrying 62,000 of NOL. So we're gonna be using the NOL. The first thing, obviously, which NOL you should use? I mean, you should use the 2017 because it expires in 20 years, right? The other one does not, but it doesn't really matter. But we're gonna be using, get rid of this 30,000. So if we have 42,000, we're gonna use 30,000. We still have 12,000 of taxable income. Well, that's not acceptable. We are going to go ahead and use 12,000 from 2018, 12,000 from 2018, to reduce our taxable income down to zero. And the NOL remaining after we after we take the 42,000, remember we had 62,000 in total, we offset it 42,000 of income, we still have 20,000 of NOL from the year 2018. Now, 2019, we had an income of 5,000. Remember uh, 20, I'm sorry, this is 2020, we had an income of 5,000. Guess what? We have 15,000 of NOL remaining. That's fine. And in 2020, we can offset 100%. So this is going to be gone as well. So we're going to be left with 15,000 of NOL because we can wipe this out, the whole thing out, using the 2018 loss. In 2021, we had 10,000 of income. Now, bear in mind that we are in 2021 and we have a loss that's being carried from 2018. So this 15,000 loss is from year 2018. What does that mean? It means this loss can offset 80% of, of the 10,000. We cannot, although we have enough NOL to wipe out all of the income of 2010, but that's not allowed going forward. The new rules is you have to take your taxable income multiplied by 80%, so you can use of the 15,000, you can only use 8,000. So that's fine. Better than nothing, right? <laughs> we can use 8,000 and what's left is 7 NOL that can be carried forward forever, offsetting 80% of your taxable income, unless the rules change. Who knows? That's always the case. At least Biden now did not change it. Who knows with the next administration? But this is how we compute the NOL schedule. Now also bear in mind, I showed you this at the beginning, an NOL carried forward is accounted for as a regular business deduction as I showed you on line 29A. Basically it's a deduction, it's an expense. It's gonna reduce your taxable income. What should you do now? You should go to farhatlectures.com and work MCQs, true false. That's gonna help you understand this topic better, whether you are studying for your CPA exam or an accounting student. You need to know this. Good luck, study hard, invest in yourself and stay safe.